Hello friends. I think it is time for our first garden tour of the season. I haven't been very consistent in the past, so I'm really going to try to be better about it this year. Um, I'm thinking I can probably handle like once a month. I think that's possible. So the, consider this the April garden tour. First off, these are the beds that we made last year. These are L-shaped beds and on each corner is artichokes. Don't know what variety. I got them a while back and I don't know if you can see we have some asparagus growing in the bed here. Um, this is the first year that we just planted them this year. You might have seen one of my videos on how to plant asparagus. There it is. You think that's funny, don't you? Okay. So it's going to be um, a couple years before we start harvesting our asparagus. So my plan with this bed is to um, put in some lettuces and other greens that um, are kind of a lower, more shallow root system so they won't disrupt the asparagus so that we're not completely have a useless bed this summer. This bed here and this bed over here are um, were built this year and we planted potatoes in both of them and then I also added some chives in this bed because I had a little bit of extra space. So the potatoes haven't popped up yet. Um, so we have three different varieties we have. Um, a, a gold one, a blue purple one, and a red skinned one. <laughs> and then this bed right here is our most recent bed. Will just built this not that long ago. And as you can see, we're still filling it. We do a modified Hugo culture type of um, filling. We do cardboard and then some sticks from our trees and then we put the soil on top. This bed here is only a foot high and because it's not very deep, we can't do a full uh, Hugo Coulter kind of um, layering. Um, and also I'd have to, I mean, it's so, so huge that I'd have to get quite a bit of ingredients to kind of finish filling that out. But um, if you're interested in, in Hugo Coulter, there's um, a lot of information out there. It's actually really popular right now. A lot of people are doing these galvanized um, raised beds and then doing the hugo culture to to fill it up so you're not having to do like two feet three feet of solid soil and the idea is um, as the things decompose they add nutrients to the soil um, they add heat to the soil and so you have a really nice biodiverse um, composition so in this bed behind me my plan is to plant a lot of the um, things that take up a lot of space like 
squash like pumpkin, like really large jack-o'-lantern pumpkin that you can't grow vertically as well because they're so heavy. Or um, uh, what's the other ones? Uh, corn, which I've been told is really hard to grow here in the Pacific Northwest because we're just, our season's so cool um, for so long. It was so rainy and wet. <laughs> and then, um, what was the other thing I said I wanted to grow in here? Oh, and then I want to plant sunflowers as well. <laughs> this is what I deal with a lot is Liam trying to undo everything. <laughs> but it's still worth bringing him out here. Can you put the straw back on the bed? Can we try that? Here we go. Watch. <gasps> what about doing that? Oh, that's where it goes. Yeah. Right in here, we have uh, all our onions planted and in between some of them, I have carrots growing as well, which I don't think they've quite popped up. Oh, maybe so. Here's one right there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, onions and carrots do well um, intercropped together. So that was my idea with this bed. But here I have my carrots. I gotta thin them out a bit, but I'm so excited because every year, Recently, I'd plant carrots. <laughs> Sorry, Liam's hugging me. Um, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't germinate at all. Um, and I think it's because I planted them too late. So this year I planted them early and we have three rows of them. Whoa. The other things I might plant in this bed, I'm th thinking a zucchini plant. I usually do one because it overproduces. And I might just intersperse some other things. We'll see what I feel like when I actually get down to it our trellis we're super happy we finally got another trellis back here this one's going to be growing cucumbers lemon and an english type cucumber over the arch there i'm really excited we just put that up today and this bed here i'm not really sure yet what i'm going to be planting but i'm <laughs> i'm one of those gardeners that always just kind of flies by my seat in my pants um, I have something growing here that I actually can't remember what I planted <laughs> and I didn't put a label. Motherhood, I guess. <laughs> I'll blame it on motherhood. And then um, I'm thinking I'm going to put some broccoli and Brussels sprouts. I have, uh, one of my broccoli didn't grow for some reason, didn't germinate. So I have a broccoli, Brussels sprout, um, might stick those here. I, this is a Brussels sprout from last year that I planted that I'm actually letting go to seed. Um, because I want to collect the seeds. I don't have any more seeds from uh, previous years. So I'm gonna let it go to seed. It's gonna take up a lot of space for a little while at least. And it's nice, uh, it's a, an extra flower for the pollinators right now. This bed here is for our tomatoes. And for those who haven't seen it, we do a trellising system where we grow our tomatoes up a string. And so that's what this is here for. They just, um, they're, it's not quite, we're not quite warm enough yet to plant them. Here's my garlic, which is doing really well. This bed here, I have some lettuce coming up, um, some spinach, I have a kale in the corner, and then I'm gonna be planting the cucumbers on the inside of this trellis to go over. Flowers are gonna be in this here at some point. And then this bed, I think I'm gonna do my peppers and eggplants, and whatever I don't have space for, I'll put down here in this bed. And this already has, I have some uh, kale growing in here. Um, I need to mulch everything, but just haven't had a chance to get to that yet. For some reason, um, every year I struggle with um, getting things in the ground in time, like my cool season crops. And I was a little bit better this year. Like I actually got the carrots in a bit earlier, which is why I think they uh, germinated. But I just struggle with keeping up with that. Does anyone else have that problem? Um, and it tends to like get too hot out and then all my cool season stuff just goes bolting. And um, I'm hoping this year I can kind of keep up with it a little bit better. I love gardening with Liam. You can see him, you can probably see him in the background there. It's still ch it's still challenging and it's, it's hard balancing motherhood um, and housework and being a wife and church duties and whatnot with gardening and also making these videos which is why I'm I'm trying not to overcommit um, by putting out I know some people put out like weekly garden updates and I just can't do that um, so I'm hoping for once a month maybe if I'm lucky I can do two a month but I'm hoping I think just one at this point so here are our blueberries 
and they're looking pretty good. We still have that one right there that is just not doing well. And so we're end up gonna end up tearing that one up. Probably not this year. I was hoping for this year, but we have so many other projects. And then we're actually gonna add on one more blueberry right here. Um, so we need to add some soil to this bed and uh, add another blueberry bush because we love blueberries and um, the more the better. And here are strawberries. These are my Albion strawberries and they're starting to bloom. And I gotta add some more straw around them, but um, and fertilize them. You can see that I seem to have a nit nitrogen deficiency right now because the leaves are a little bit yellow with dark green veins. That's pretty typical nitrogen deficiency. So we're gonna fertilize them, hopefully improve that. And then over here is where I did my um, renovation. And so if you didn't see that video, go check it out. Uh, and my plants are looking pretty good. I'm a little worried about this one. It's not looking so hot, um, but most of the other ones look pretty good. So I think they'll survive. Behind me here are the raspberries and you can see my trellis system is working uh, pr pretty well. And uh, they also seem to have a little bit of a nitrogen deficiency. As you can see, the, the leaves are um, a bit yellow, at least on these, they're not as bad over there. So I um, plan to fertilize these with an all-purpose fertilizer, but also I'm probably gonna end up testing it and then adding a little extra blood meal. Blood meal is a great nitrogen source for uh, when you see a deficiency like that. And they're starting to bud out. We're gonna get some bloom soon. Oh, raspberries are my absolute favorite. What is yours? And of course our compost piles here, which were, we have one empty one, but we have two piles that we're currently adding to. And then one that we're letting settle there. It's kind of fallen down. And that is our failed attempt at growing mushrooms, these logs here. If anyone has any advice on growing mushrooms, drop them below. ended up falling down and I thought well I might as well give a tour our pear tree is doing well we have uh, two apple trees and they're all blooming so hoping we'll have really good harvest for those <laughs> this is actually I think it's a dog toy quick update on our shade garden we are still adding soil to it it's a long process for sure it's a lot of soil um, this is a columbine that I had in a pot for a while and it's looking very happy and then over here, I planted a white oak leaf hydrangea. I'm so excited. It's gonna be like five feet bit tall and wide, so. Look at how filthy he is. So I hope you enjoyed this quick garden update, garden tour, and I hope you feel encouraged too because you might feel behind in your garden plans. And I always feel behind, like I should have more things in the ground. I have to just realize that I'm at a stage in my life where it is difficult to keep up with a lot of things and give myself some grace because of that little guy. As the years go by, I also hope to do more uh, winter gardening, which would mean that there would be more in my garden through the winter, but we're in the process of filling a lot of these beds. And so I couldn't really plant much in them. Um, so hopefully as now that we're done with the skeleton of our garden, I'm hoping that I can plant a few more things that will last longer through the season since we're not constantly having to add more soil. When we first bought this house uh, and we made an, a design for our garden, we set it up in a five-year plan that we would um, kind of each year add more and more to it in a way to focus on um, kind of growing with our garden, like learning as we go, but also just, it seemed overwhelming to do it all at once. And also financially, it was a, because, especially since we had to buy all our soil and buy and build all these raised beds, um, by setting up a five-year plan, it just made it a lot more chewable, <laughs> I guess you could say, more bite-sized. 
Maybe at some point I'll do a video on gardening on a budget. A garden can save you a lot of money, but it also can cost you a lot of money. If you um, do it all at once and, and do certain materials or um, buy a lot of things that you don't eat or need, but also people oftentimes feel this pressure to build their garden all at once because they see all these beautiful Instagram photos of people with completed gardens that have been around for like 10 to 15 years and they feel like their garden should look like that in the first season. And I know I feel that way still, even after five years, that my garden should look like people who have had gardens for 15 to 20 years. But for me, taking this kind of bite size amount each year where we add one or two more beds, uh, this year was three actually, um, it just made it very doable for us financially and just uh, time-wise as well. Because this is a fairly large garden to, to attend. Now I have a toddler, so it's even more work. <laughs> if you're like me and you're looking at all these beautiful, perfect, Pinterest-worthy gardens, just remind yourself that um, Things like this take time and we need to give ourselves grace. As we learn, we're gonna make mistakes, but we need to keep trying because that's how we'll learn. I think I pretty much covered everything I wanted to in this first tour of the garden. Uh, so I will probably try to get another one out in May and we'll have a lot more things in the garden by that point. Our frost free date was actually yesterday, but we still have a lot of cool rainy weather this week. So I'm gonna just actually hold back on planting all my warm crops because I'm still a little nervous that they may not do as well. So I'm probably gonna wait till the, after the first weekend in May and um, plant a lot of those. And so check back in May to see what I have next. Thanks for joining me in my garden tour today. I better get this little one inside. I think he's hungry. Go out and grow something, God bless.